This is a very exciting moment for me because if you notice, my hands are not on the camera. My man, Jarrett, is back. He's, he's not talking. <laughs> he's, I'm here, I'm here. He's here, he's here. So with Jarrett back, you know that means things are getting serious. And today's adventure, although it's a little sidetrack, it's not exactly our main mission, it's still very important, and it's what makes the four-rotor capable of putting power to the ground. As I told you before, the winter's diff was wrong. They sent the wrong cups on it. They sent the wrong flanges. We're gonna take the winter's diff out. So this is kind of a mock-up run of how quick can we replace the rear end on this car. Take it out, take it apart. I wanna know what's inside of it. Take the clamshell apart, send those pieces off to winter's, get them to fix the rear diff. This is the first time Jarrett has seen the car since it was only half done. And really everything from the engine back is all new to him. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be so satisfied looking at metal. I'm, I'm satisfied looking at metal. He's got a hard on for metal. One of the coolest spots is look at how much room we made for the passenger. Like everything was focused on the driver, but the passenger side has more space even with having the center diff right here. I'm gonna see how easy it is to remove this diff now that we're in a real world, world situation. It's like a jungle gym inside the car. <laughs> You're not gonna be able to squeeze back there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> how far are you Actually, going? Actually, it makes me wonder how, how in a normal situation am I gonna remove this? <laughs> I knew it was gonna be tight doing this though. That was the one interesting part is when we designed it, you can see we designed it to actually have another cutout here, but we didn't. So we were gonna have the ability to pull the whole diff up. Instead, we have this that will kind of angle it, flip it to its side and pull it this way. This is some sort of bondage, like fantasy of Jared's right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, the hard part is this ass end of it with this bar, because we can't pick it straight up. It has to come out. Okay. Yeah, it has to come out towards me. Come under, right here, to the bottom of the car. Uh, these two plates are not removable. They're like they're like the structural rigidity of the whole car. I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> <laughs> this thing weighs like 110 pounds. It is, the, it is heavy. It's one of the diff bolts themselves. So the weird part, it's gonna take a little bit of finagling because it's it's purposely suspended upward. So it's it's gonna put some tension on these bolts when we go to remove them. Like I almost almost need like a jack under the, the diff when we go oh, to, yeah. when we go to do this in the future. You ever see those videos of uh, people holding like a wrench in front of like a tire and it doesn't fit at all? That's how I feel like wrenching on this car. I feel woefully inadequate on my own car. I have no idea. What it is. You've never seen it? There's there's a picture of like a guy holding like a wrench. It's like a, hey, you know, become a ASC certified car tech and he's like holding it next to a tire like this. Like, there's nothing on a tire that would need like a, a wrench like this. So you pull these two brackets off yep. completely. Okay. Those come off. That top tube comes out completely. Yep. And then it'll fall over and put it right out the front. Awesome. It's also a theory. Because <laughs> you could pick it up, you could pick it up and wiggle it a little bit. Oh yeah. I'm thinking I'll have like a jack underneath it when I go to remove yeah, it norm do normally. It. Do it on the ground. Yeah. She's out that back side. This bar needs to come out. Basically, ready to pull it. Hmm. This is going to take some uh, rubber mallet. I just realized there are uh, two Allen. There's some on the bottom side too. That really holds it into place. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you didn't see that either, did you? No. I only thought there were ones on the top. It's not coming out if the bottom ones are in. <laughs> OK, 
I don't feel as bad now that <laughs> it still is stuck. There we go. Question is, which way do I bring it uh, out? That way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what I might do, is, you no know, joke, does I might straddle on those two bars right there, and then come back around and because and, uh, because I don't think I can get it through unless I snaked it through right here. I think I'm you know I'm gonna try I'm gonna try pulling it out this way. Just make sure you get a close up on the muscles required to make this happen. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> That's definitely not gonna happen. <laughs> You haven't gotten it. <laughs> the center of weight is so weird. There we go. Oh my god. Is that gonna move? Yeah, I let go, it's gonna fall. It magically appeared on this side. Hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> yeah. With my two friends. <laughs> and a couple freak out moments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's, and that's awkward because you want to grab it here, but this moves. Yeah, right? yeah. So you can't, you gotta. It like rolls out of your hands. Mm -hmm. So Jarrett didn't realize how heavy this is and said, I want the thumbnail for this video. Stop. <laughs> Literally said stop as it's like, Oh god. <laughs> so we're, we're gonna recreate the thumbnail now, now just for Jarrett. Alright, just like 10 more minutes. <laughs> Make sure we get, like, get the right shot. You know they called this a third member, right? <laughs> What's that? No, it's literally, they call this a third member. Why? No, there's no, there's no punchline to that. This is literally called a third member. It's my 10 inch. It's 10 inch. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, I'm not joking. No, when people say, hey, how big's your third member? I'm not joking. That's literally, the, your rear diff is called your third member. Why? I don't know. If this was a, a human and it was standing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here, let's compare that to my front diff. Yes. You see this ring right here? That's, that's the ring. When they say ring and pinion, they're talking about this ring right here. This is 168 millimeters, which in freedom units ends up being whatever, 168 divided by 25.3, 25.4. This, on the other hand, is a 10 inch ring. This one is four. <laughs> so it's really, really small, whatever, what, one, 150 is four, five, six. Okay, so it's like six or seven. So this is a six or seven inch diff. This is a 10 inch diff. Keep that back straight. <laughs> oh, 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 my legs. Oh my god, where's the car at? <laughs> oh my god. So what's wrong with the diff? Well, a good old beaver from Winter's Performance, nice guy and makes a clearly quality, beefy, stout product, sent me the wrong flanges, these little pieces right here. If it was the BMW diff, this little pry bar action right here, this would pop off with like a snap ring. This is not the case. It might snap off, but underneath this area here is a good old bearing that only works for this flange. I can't swap the flanges out. I need a different bearing for this flange and for the upgraded one. What he suggested was taking all this ring of bolts out, taking this face off of the entire diff on both sides, and then shipping him this whole piece, and then letting him heat this area up, get this, extract the bearing here, and swapping this out with the beefier 934s. This should be relatively easy to remember that this is this side because we have these bolts in the back, this bolt is on the bottom side, you know, the diff, this is the front of the diff, so this is facing downward. So it should be easy to remember which side of the diff is which. Instead of getting all crazy, this one should be the passenger side. Uh, we'll put a P, passenger, and we'll put a P, passenger. Nice and straightforward there. Getting smart. What's funny is if I fuck it up, P and D are very similar looking letters. <laughs> I was thinking about that while I was coming up with that idea. The 
this will be the driver's side. Fold D. There. Part of me thinks that it's just gonna start oozing liquid. So you're thinking, cool, this is an awesome setup for oil. You're right, except oil can only go in here. There is no drain in the center area. What? <laughs> like you'd think, oh, it spills over to here. Hey, there's something down here. Nope, this is just a receptacle to store this thing. Like this comes off and you just, but that's the only hole for oil. I mean, I like a lot of the features of this otherwise. Oops. Son of a bitch. Let's see if this thing has oil in it. No. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Leave that in the video. Leave it in the video. Yeah, we're all gonna, we're all gonna find out what's inside of this together. I really am curious, because this is supposed to be probably the, one of the best, highest torque rating diffs, just that can take a beating. But I wanna know what type of differential is in it. I wanna know what type of limited slip is in it. I wanna know, well, what, what? Everything in here, I just, I, I'm very fascinated by this. I'm, I'm actually really excited. Whoa, <laughs> that is massive. So look at, this is the piece right here, that blue area, that's the ball bearing area. That's what needs to be replaced, all of the inside of this. Look at how beefy, 35 spline. That's what most of the car is, is 35 spline. Wow. First thing I notice, this side has a, uh, like a metal collector, it's like a magnet, that's pretty cool. Both sides have their bearings and everything. Again, if this wasn't a $6,000 piece of equipment, I'd be all for doing this, like swapping these out, but Beaver said that these are shimmed for the crack sides and that you have to heat, you have to heat this area up with, you know, like a torch to let the bearing come out. I'm like, mm, sounds good, but no, thank you. That's a roller bearing there. Yeah, see, look, these are all shims and stuff like that. So we're gonna, I want you to make sure you're filming this so that way if we ever have a warranty issue, you're seeing everything left the way it is. But I felt this whole ring you can see that whole ring right there. That's nuts. That is, that's the 10 inch part of the 10 inch diff. This thing is just a monster. I'm just making sure I don't leave it in a precarious situation. So we're gonna pull this out without dropping anything. Jesus Christ, that is really heavy. This inside of here is their limited slip differential. You can see the two sets of splines there. So however it keeps traction between the two tires is hidden inside of here. Winters uses a certain type of limited slip inside of here. And I'm not gonna mess with that now, but if, if it doesn't work for what I need, I can always swap this out with a wave track. The wave track is the helical one, but that's for the front for turning. This is actually a 410 ring and pinion gear. So this spinning to this is actually for one to 4.1. So when you spin this, see how that's spinning? It's going through here, skipping everything, going to the quick change gears back here that you can adjust. And based on this one to 410 ratio here to here, you're adjusting it percentages back here. The downside to a winter's quick change to me is that anytime there's gear contact, you lose up to 5% of your torque. On a normal differential, this line goes to here, straight. You know, straight in, just like the, the BMW front diffs. So that would be just 5% loss here. But instead it goes through here, has gear loss turning into heat down here, and then more gear loss here. We'll see if that really makes a difference at all.